everybody. Thanks for hanging out with me today. This week's build, we're going to put together a, an, at an eight and a half inch Guto chef's knife. Uh, this will be made out of W2 bar stock. As you can see, I already got the profile cut out and I'm about to put my maker's mark on that. So I've had this stamp for about 10 years and I've used it so many times that it's, um, it, it still makes a great impression, but I normally would have I have to do it a couple of times. And when you're doing that, you have to be rather careful getting your stamp placed right back in the grooves of the previous impression that you just made. That can get kind of tricky. Sometimes you get that double vision stamp um, and that sort of ruins the whole thing. So uh, this one turned out spot on. So here's my second whack. And now that I've got my stamp maker's mark in place, we can continue on. So next step, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm uh, gonna run one, one uh, normalizing cycle. Um, I had some other blades to, to normalize. So I put it in at the 1575 cycle, put the Guto in with the other EDCs that I have in there and gave it one normalization cycle. Since it wasn't forged to shape, um, it's not really necessary to run multiple normalizing cycles. Uh, you can probably get away with just, just going into the quench, but uh, um, for the purpose of just being consistent, I went ahead and did one normalization cycle. So getting ready for the actual quench, what I'm doing here is I'm applying some cement furnace so that we can uh, establish a hamon, a quench line, when we do get to uh, get to the quench, and when we start to uh, polish out the blade, you should see that hamon line come out very clearly. So this stuff actually works pretty good. You do need to get it on there and let it dry for at least 24 hours, uh, so that it's dry to the touch. Because what happens when you apply heat to this? It starts to uh, the moisture inside that clay starts to want to evaporate. And what it does is it makes the clay swell and you get pockets, uh, which is what I did. I only let this set up for about six hours and I thought it was dry enough. And without using a heat gun to continue that drying process, I just went ahead and started my quench cycle. And you'll see coming up uh, what happens when your clay starts to bubble up uh, you lose that layer of clay and your steel will actually harden underneath that clay in specific spots. So here we are moving on to the quench cycle. I do quench in parks 50 for W2. It requires a fast quench. held this in that oil for about 30 seconds, roughly, and took it out. And once I took it out and I just used that metal ruler there, just scraped that clay right off, it just fell right off. I could immediately tell, you won't see it in the picture here, but uh, I could immediately tell that the, uh, the steel had hardened below the quench line and then also in a couple of spots up towards the spine where that clay had bubbled up. Next step, we go into the temper cycles and I finished, I did two temper cycles at 375 uh, to keep uh, the hardness up a little bit. So I went below 400 degrees on my temper cycle. It did come out with a warp, but um, I did one other temper cycle in there to, to correct the warp using a jig. And it took it out uh, enough to where I could finish grinding out the rest of any other warp that was remaining, I could take out and grinding the bevels. Here, I'm just going to take off the rest of the scale using my surface grinding attachment on my TW90. Uh, one bad thing about this thing is that these magnets are extremely powerful. So getting, putting the blade on is easy. Taking it off is quite the chore. Um, 
So rather than actually do this through all the grit of the belt, um, I take this down to 120 on each side, nice and flat. That way it doesn't, uh, doesn't take out my maker's mark because uh, I did actually put that in fairly deep.
now that the blade's hand sanded, it's time to think about getting the handle materials fit up and and start to get that work done. So, uh, unfortunately, I lost uh, a good bit of footage on on getting the handle material ready. But what I uh, what I'm using on this piece is a stabilized uh, uh, maple burl, uh, very natural light wood, and then a uh, purple heart spacer. So I'm making a it, it's more it's a frame handle. So left outer layers will be the burl and and the in the middle layer will be the purple heart. So getting the purple heart cleaned up here and we'll be getting going to the next step which you're going to see here is um, I already have uh, prepped the burl and it's over on the left hand side of the screen there. So what I'm doing now is I'm gluing up the frame. this particular build I'm using a G5 for the frame fit up here. Um, I have to mention I am using black G10 liners in between the purple heart and maple burl. We'll get this set up, clamp down, and let it cure up for 24 hours. Then we'll do the proof. At this point, I got the handle block cleaned up and squared up. And what I'm doing now is I'm making, mixing up another batch of epoxy so I can bed the tang into the block. What this does is it gives me a nice tight fit and allows me to remove the blade from the handle and shape the handle prior to its final fit up. Typically when I bed tangs, I usually use uh, G-Flex epoxy, which is, it gives you about a 20, 25 minute working time. Um, and it sets, sets up a little bit slower. Five minutes set, tends to set up too quickly when you're bedding tangs. So I like to have a little bit more of a, a time frame where I can uh, have the tang sit in there have it cure up just about to where it's still pliable and then pull the tang out. So here I've uh, I've finished bedding the tang. It's been removed and I can put it back in now. So now I'm just checking to make sure that uh, my high, my low points are still the same after bedding the tang. And if they're not, then I just make marks across the handle and then I'll take it back out to the grinder and, and square it back up. So once everything's squared away, what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to uh, cut out the, the shape of the handle that I want. First, I'm marking the tops there just, just to kind of gauge how wide I want my handle at the top once I finish grinding. So I'm making some marks there with my calipers. 
and I'll transfer those marks that are on the top there over to the sides of the handle material. And then I'll cut out the handle shape, which I've drawn on the paper over to the right. And I'll set that on there. I'll trace it out. And once that's finished, uh, then we'll go out and finish profiling that handle. All right, we're in the home stretch here. Uh, we're going to do the final profiling of the handle material, get the hand sanding done, and get ready for the final fit up.